Experience the I Am Melanin Magic difference by going to our website, www.iammelaninmagic.com and purchasing your products today. I am Melanin Magic and so are you. Welcome to Tunisia's Locks, Beauty Tips, and Potpourri, the channel where we get it all in. You can also learn more about the I Am Melanin Magic brand. Thank you for stopping by. Greetings, greetings. Welcome 2023. Welcome to Tunisia's Locks, Beauty Tips, and Potpourri. How's everyone doing? How you doing? How you doing? I hope y'all are doing well. I hope that you're 2023 year is being anchored in with gratitude, an attitude of peace and prosperity, productivity. I hope that you are feeling more of being in your power and in your passion. And if you are not, then you are doing your part to get on purpose. Welcome to my channel today, y'all. If you are new, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to describe, describe, yeah, describe in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you are an OG, if you're one of my soulmates, one of my kindred spirits, don't forget to give me a shout out in the comments. Oh, and before we even get started with the video so that you don't forget, put in the comments what you feel helps you with your dry scalp, your dandruff, your psoriasis, or your seborrheic dermatitis, okay? And identify which of those things you have a problem with. That's what we're gonna be talking about today, y'all. Um, I feel like it's it's really an important topic. By the way, too, uh, we're gonna be doing, I'm on my day four, y'all. I got about 15 pounds to drop. And we're gonna be doing a challenge more than likely on my Butterfly Transformations channel. So if you are interested in participating in the challenge, go to Butterfly Transformations. You can type in my name if you want, and it may come up. And make sure you subscribe to the site so that you can participate. We just need support. It's going to be a very simple challenge. I need to first get over the hump. I'm in day four. I'm doing good. As y'all can see, I'm having a cachava. I love cachava. I can talk about this all day, but I won't unless I get an affiliate link. I won't be giving away the business. Actually, I don't mind. It's excellent. I've been doing this, y'all, for, I don't know, about five or six months. When I get serious about wanting to address nutrition and weight loss and I do this, this is the kind of shake. Now, I've added some extra stuff to it. Put some fresh ginger in there this time, a little bit of vanilla, some berries, and, um, oh, some stevia with the almond milk and the actual shake, but it really only requires a shake, but it's got so much stuff in it, down to probiotics. And I find when I take this, y'all, when I say it can take you through the day, especially if you wait until late in the day to do anything, like for example, it is what time here now on beautiful Saturday, it's four, and this is the first time I'm eating today. Cause I wanna really transition into, um, and I'm gonna get off, I'm gonna get on topic, cause this topic is really important. I want to transition into um, intermittent fasting. Now, this is what you're going to see me drinking. I found this by way. Y'all, it's so damn good. It's as refreshing to gaze upon as it is to go down. I was in the comment section on a YouTube video, and I saw a lady talking about making her goals and being inspired by this other woman's channel to go ahead and start her tea company. And I was like, okay, let me support her. Let me check this out. So all this time I've been saying diversity and then T and then NOLA and it's diversity, T-E-A, but diversity, NOLA is the name of the tea. Diversity, T-E-A, NOLA. And this is Blue by You. And when I tell you her teas are amazing, Y'all know I like anything that's beautiful, anything that's bright, anything that is regenerative. Just by gazing upon it, you get inspiration. And so you make the tea, you let it steep. You get four enough for four quarts. And you do one bag and you let it steep overnight in the refrigerator. And this is the color. And y'all got a red one that tastes way better than anything that Starbucks or Tizo could come up with. So I just have to show this to y'all because you're going to see me going back and forth through the video. Okay, so today we're talking about dandruff. Now, I'm gonna touch briefly on dandruff and dry scalp. Um, I'm not getting much into seborrheic dermatitis. 
or uh, psoriasis, only to differentiate between what those things are so that you don't get mixed up. But some of this information can apply across the board. Psoriasis is like, is like an autoimmune disorder, which produces, oh my goodness, some of the worst kind of sometimes lesions, inflammation, red sores, and almost for some people it can look like open wounds in the scalp, but it can also happen on different parts of the body, okay? And you have to be very careful what you put on that because a flare-up can feel awful. I've been doing these essential oils for a long time, and I think for about 20 years, and one time I didn't realize that a friend of mine had psoriasis, and I guess either he didn't either, or he was in, uh, what do you call, um, what do you call when somebody's in, uh, I can't think of the word, but y'all put it in the comments because you probably know. I was going to say a recession. <laughs> what? Re remission. And, you know, this was a great blend, but because it had a lot of citrusy oils in it. And you'll hear me talk about why citrusy oils are good for dandruff and, and dry scalp conditions because they contain, um, I think it's called oh, D-limonene or limonene, L-I-M-O-N, not L-E-M-O-N, limonene, and uh, uh, oftentimes a lot of linolols, which are uh, chemical constituencies that you find with the D-limonene. You, D-limonene, you're going to find that in the citrusy oils like uh, orange, mandarin, uh, um, uh, wild orange, uh, grapefruit, lemon, uh, lime is very good in terms of fighting and combating um, these kinds of conditions. The um, I'm not speaking to psoriasis though. The um, linalol is found in uh, like other flowers, herbs, and woods, and it is something that has a lot of antimicrobial agents in it, which is why many of you have found these to help with your, your dandruff and your dry scalp issues. Shout out to Dee from Gold Deluxe, who was here visiting with us on the channel, I think maybe two videos ago. She talked about, gave rave, rave reviews for I Am Melanin Magic, and how it has solved all of her clients' problems. And many of you have written in to me personally and given testimonial. Please go back to the website, I Am Melanin Magic, and write those testimonials in. However, those products were not created specifically with that in mind. Those are not necessarily unintended consequences, but they're indirect benefits of using this because of the powerful synergistic blend of all of the oils you get greater than the sum total in terms of effect and because many of the ingredients have those two in there you will find that putting it on your hair will solve a lot of your issues fyi i'm working on the two the water spray water-based or let me say y'all say water-based because even though it's going to be a floral spray it'll be water-based for dandruff dry scalp type of issues and also an oil base now i prefer oil base for about just about anything that i do with my hair so there will be both my goal y'all is to have them by mid to late spring if not i know i will have the oil version of what you can put on your hair directly to treat some of the stuff we're going to be talking about today as well as the magical hair growth serum accelerator the max is already almost ready. I'm just ready to go out for the second clinical trials to all of you who said you wanted to participate. So I think it's about 15 of you all and I needed about at least 12. So we're good there. Um, so my hope is to put you in a place today where you understand why you need to deal with this from a micro lock, sister lock perspective, give you some brief suggestions on what you can do to combat it and to help you understand what it is. All right, we are already nine minutes in. I'm going to talk a lot and real quickly. So let me just get some of my cachava. All right. So let's talk about first, y'all, what they look like or what it looks like. A lot of times people will get dry scalp confused with dandruff. 
some people will, can feel and do feel, and that's fine, that dry scalp is a form of dandruff because it all involves flaking, stuff that flakes. Sometimes you can look down in a person's hair and you see all this stuff. It looks like snow flakes. It can also look like the the dust from the snow where it's not as big as flakes that look sort of crystalline, but they look more like little spots and droplets of things. Um, sometimes you'll look at a scalp condition because remember, we're talking about the condition of the scalp, the skin, the skin of your scalp. And you will see something that doesn't look as powdery and as tiny particles as, as much as it looks like something more like a flake or something larger. With the dry scalp, it's literally dry scalp, okay? And it looks more white. And when you see that falling down on your shoulders, you see these white little specks. The dandruff, and this is not this is not absolute, but th these I'm speaking in terms of generalities. With the dandruff, it can look more stained with a color light brown or even yellowish or goldish, and they look more like flakes. If you've had a kid that had cradle cap, Sophia had cradle cap, and I used, um, she had it for about maybe two, three weeks before I realized what it was. I was looking down, I was like, oh, what is that? And then it started spreading. And all I did at the time was put black seed oil here, and then it started to come up in like layers. Uh, dandruff looks like that, except it's a lot more small. So it has a, a more like a translucent color over your skin. The dry scalp is caused by things that dry out your scalp or dry scalp, stuff that you might experience in the winter time. Things you may experience if you're washing your hair too often. Things and it's being dried out or you're using products that are contributing to the dryness of your scalp. Let's say, for example, one of the things that I'm continuously running into, y'all, with the hydrosol-based misting sprays that I'm trying to create is not wanting to put so much of all of this other garbage in there that's in a lot of this stuff that's out here on the commercial market because some of those things in various proportions can contribute to the very thing that the blend itself is trying to or is successful at or proving to help eliminate. You will be surprised at how many of these products that, let's say for example, an age, uh, ageless, this is the ageless serum, anti-aging, but it's ageless serum, a privilege that many are not fortunate enough to have ageless. Um, a serum like this that's in a, a cream or a lotion, you might have two or three droppers full of this ingredient here, which is the power ingredient, put in some mess that's going to make it go on smooth, that's going to make it creamy, that's going to make it look a certain way. You're getting very little of that and you're getting so much more of the other stuff and the other stuff that they're choosing, while some of it is natural or synthetically imitating something that's natural, those things are not always the best thing for your skin or for your hair or for your body. It's a really big trick bag, so you have to be careful. So that's one of the things that's slowing that up because as you know, I've got to use a preservative that I'm satisfied with. Otherwise, you're going to have stuff growing in it. I got to use um, an emulsifier, okay? Um, and these are things that are in a lot of the stuff that we use. And most of them are food grade. But too many of these different things over time in certain proportions are not where I want to go with this. But at the same time, I don't want to send you an empty bottle with, and I thought about this, with a tiny blend of essential oil with a sprayer and tell you to add some uh, purified water and this each time you do it and shake it up and use it. I thought about that because that way we wouldn't need any of this other stuff. But anyway, so with the uh, the dry scalp and the dandruff, y'all, I gotta see. With the dry scalp and the dandruff, excuse me, you wanna get on this and 
one of the reasons why you want to be on top of this, y'all, I don't usually use a light, but this room is very dark today. One of the reasons why you want to um, get on this, y'all, is because not only is it unsightly, unsightly, although it, a dandruff in and of itself is not contagious, it's not technically harmful in and of itself more than anything, it's embarrassing and it's a nuisance. But one of the reasons why you want to pay attention to this is, number one, you may not even know that you have it because you can't see what's going on all back up in here. And let's say, for example, yours is associated seasonally. You never have it any months out of the year, but come around fall or winter, you start to notice something. Uh, you may not be paying attention to it regularly, or you may think that you don't have it during other parts of the year. You move into another geographic uh, zone and the water is different, hard water versus soft water and the mineral mineralization and so forth and so on. And you start to develop issues related to your scalp. You may not be paying attention to it because you don't always see it, but you may not always see it because you're not always looking for it. And this is where it can become problematic because unless you start going through your hair, you know how I tell y'all to, to, what do y'all hear me say? I tell y'all that you can see I'm getting ready, I'm doing my retightening uh, up in this area because I'm going into the lovely Efrod, so I'm doing the top. And we are going to do a Zoom retightening, don't worry. But um, <clears throat> you may not always see it, but it doesn't mean it's not there. It's like the married locks. It's like uh, going through your locks and checking out the health, looking at the ones that are thinning, looking at the ones that maybe someone married without your permission, or looking at the locks that maybe were not married without your permission, but are married or need to be married, and just inspecting what you expect from your loctician and even from what you are reaping with your own hands if you're doing your own reties, you got to pay attention to this because over time, not only is it just a nuisance and it makes you think your hair is dirty or that someone has bad hygiene, even though that can be the situation, but it does not have to be, it can become unsightly in your locks if it gets lodged in your locks, which can happen. And if you guys remember, I told you I started uh, my essential oil journey because of the issues I had with this part of my hair up here with dry scalp and sometimes dandruff. Now you can have dry scalp and dandruff. You can have dry scalp in one area where it's flaking up white and it's dry. You need to put some oil or some essential oils or you need to do something else, condition your hair, moisturize, whatever. Or you can have dandruff in another area of your hair. But what's going to happen is if you don't pay attention to the health of your scalp and what's going on with your scalp, first and foremost, it's going to get lodged in your locks. And it's going to get lodged, not down here in your locks, but up here in your locks. And as your locks grow down, you may notice certain things that you really weren't paying attention to before. Then you got to go in with something like an apple cider vinegar rinse, which my experience with that was not so great. I still didn't upload that video and I will. But when it shows everything that's in there, you're still going to have to clean it out. It's not that magical kind of thing that you see with people with these large locks and they lay in there. And the, For me, it wasn't. And y'all know I've had these locks for 12, 13 years. And then they get up and the water is black or brown and all of a sudden the hair looks like, you know, move over bacon. It's time for sizzling. My experience was not like that. So if it gets lodged in your locks, it can look like, you can think maybe it's lint. You can think maybe it's product residue. You might even think it's oil, okay? But what it is is dandruff or the flakes that have gotten embedded in your hair. And if it's the dandruff and you have dandruff and you have the larger flakes, not this large, y'all, but the flakes that you can actually look down and see that looks almost like scales, then that's going to be hardened in your locks in certain areas. And this can be going on and you may not be paying attention to your hair. Um, so there are things that you need to be mindful of with regard to dry scalp, dandruff, seborrheic dermatitis, which is like an exaggerated form of dandruff. It can be very, very severe, causing severe inflammation. The other thing is that over time, if it progresses and you don't deal with it, you can begin, your skin can become so inflamed, excuse me, your skin can become so inflamed that here you look up and your follicles are taking a beating and suddenly not only is the itching and the inflammation, 
Everybody doesn't have to have itching. I don't have itching. I don't have inflammation. Well, the condition in and of itself is a form of inflammation, but I don't have any visible inflammation is what I'm talking about. You can look up and it's done a job on your um, follicles and over time it can cause your follicles to die off and then you will start to begin to notice thinning which is why it's important to inspect your hair because if you're not someone that has routinely had dandruff, it could be any number of things that are causing you to now experience dandruff. If you are someone that has had dandruff but you have it seasonally, it could be to a point to where you don't look for it during the summer, but you have it over here. And you got somebody doing your hair and they're not telling you, I have dandruff, you got dandruff back here. So that's another something else you want to be talking to your lacticians about. What does the general health of my scalp look like? And if they see an area that seems to have patches of dry scalp or something going on with it at regular intervals, each time you get your retightenings, then you're going to want to address that. So those are the two main things. It can make your locks look unsightly. Over time, if it becomes severe enough or it becomes itchy enough, it can cause you to scratch and it can become so inflamed that you lose your hair. It also contributes to residue and buildup, which causes the follicles to become clogged, which can also result in hair loss. So these are things that you want to be careful of. Now with the dry scalp, as I said, weather extremes, sometimes with people that have eczema, so if you used to have eczema, Ronnie had eczema, so we used to deal with that. Um, certain vitamin deficiencies, a lack of hydration, like I said, weather, certain things like that can contribute to it. The types of products that are drying your, your hair out. When you have dandruff, it is usually, although there's still some controversy in the community about what the actual cause is, there's an association with a particular fungal, fungal fungus called, uh, what is that fungus called? Um, Melasesia, melasesia, melasesia is what it's called. And it's a particular type of fungus. And sometimes, although that fungus can be on certain people's scalp naturally and not be problematic, it can interact with your particular constituency and begin to create an overgrowth, okay? And that overgrowth is what it is that you begin to see in the with the feedback being the dandruff. So in terms of why it's a problem, that can really vary. There are some things that you can do with, with regard to your diet to begin to address it. You need to be getting plenty of water. You need to um, diet and lifestyle. You need to reduce stress. Stress can contribute to an overabundance of dandruff and dry scalp. As you know, stress can contribute to just about any of the problems that people have, okay? Stress is only going to compound it if stress in and of itself is not the reason for. If you have a deficiency of sulfur in your diet, um, y'all know I go down to Flow Villa to get that healing water, right? It's the one, it's the oldest well in the entire country that still has sulfur in the water. So when you get the water, it literally smells like rotten eggs. But if I were to take that water and soak my hair in it, it'd probably do me a world of good in general just because of the benefits for hair, skin, and joint, and overall bodily health that sulfur has. But foods that are high in sulfur, like onions, garlic, um, this is these are ingredients that are in the oil as well that, that, that um, I'm going to be sharing with you all soon. But uh, onions, garlic, eggs, um, also certain fats. Uh, certain omega-3s are good for that, like salmon and so forth. You want to make sure you're getting your B12. You want to make sure that you got enough zinc in your diet. If you're dealing with fighting this, you might want to add some sulfur flakes um, to your supplemental regimen. You might want to, and that's going to help your hair grow anyway. You might want to add um, your B12. You may want to make sure that you're getting enough zinc in your diet. These are some very basic things that you can do. You can explore essential oils and make yourself just a water-based spray that you shake up. Uh, don't use it beyond, say, a week, week and a half. Uh, not a week, week and a half. About a week and a half to two weeks that you shake up and spray in your hair. You know, tea tree oil is wonderful. Melaleuca is an excellent um, way to combat 
dandruff. Um, you want to watch sometimes the medications that you're taking. Certain medications can actually contribute to the production of or the imbalance, let me say, in the system that can make it worth any wor worse. Any of the uh, essential oils that are antifungal, you hear us say in that um, ad, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, anti something else, bacteria. I can't can't think of the, the other word. Anti-funk. Essential oils. Many of them have um, the micro antimicrobial uh, uh, effects that are really good. When you look at the um, why can't I think of the name? MC, uh, the uh, chromatography rating of the essential oils. You want oils that have high levels of limonene that I was talking about or the linalol. Or lavender is one of those. You want to just make sure that um, you are um, putting together something that's not going to contribute or create an overstimulation and make the situation worse, but you do want to do everything that you can to arrest the situation. So a good idea for everybody it would be to look at, look through your hair. Okay. You may need to get a child, a, a daughter or a son of yours to go through other areas of your hair where you don't have the same level of visibility. Now, you know, I always say when you're in the light and you're doing this out in the car, especially like I've got this light looking at me now, I can actually see lint pieces, little pieces of cotton, little strings going up into the air just because we're alive. But you can also put your hands on your scalp like this and do like this. And if you get a lot of fall and it doesn't look like lint, okay, and you haven't been outside sweeping, cutting grass, I have a habit of doing that, cutting grass and doing other things, sweeping the floor and bending down. I sometimes have Alvy's hair in my locks, I have to go back and look and you see a lot of foliage, focus on the area, go through the scalp and look. Look at your actual scalp. Does it look healthy? Does it look shiny? Not oily, but is it shiny? Um, is your scalp too oily? All right, but is it shiny? Do, do If you were to prick it like this or to scratch it, would it bring up some dandruff? Check it and check it on a regular and be mindful of what is going on with your scalp health because as i mentioned not only can it be in, in, uh, unsightly over time and it can take a lot to actually get out any type of residue it can create a buildup that can harm your follicles it can create such an excess of scratching and itchiness and inflammation or an inflammatory response that you begin to have thinning or you begin to lose hair it's something to really pay attention to and I would urge those of you that have lost a lot of hair in this area or around these areas to check for that and see if, if you scratch your scalp, are you having any of those issues? Or do you ever experience redness, swelling, lesions, uh, dry skin patches or anything like that that feels very uncomfortable um, that you don't feel is directly associated with um, the reties, although I will say that excessive reties, uh, retightening tension is going to create pulling, it's going to create inflammation and irritation, which can almost mimic uh, a severe uh, dandruff response. It can mimic that, although it may not necessarily be that. Make sure you get in your B12. If you have to take a supplement, a B12 supplement or a um, zinc supplement, or even add um, some extra sulfur to your diet, as I mentioned. Or maybe take a woman's multivitamin. Monitor the amount of water intake that you're getting. This is super, super, super important. And I, like I always say, y'all, inspect what you expect. When I used to talk about the lint and the cotton all the time, I would have people say, oh my God, I didn't realize I actually had it. Oh my gosh, I have a lot of it. My girlfriend that y'all remember, Serena, who I did a video with a long time ago, when she started paying attention to it and she took my suggestions with regard to certain things, y'all, she realized she had stuff throughout her whole head that upon first glance, she would not have been able to see. And then when she started realizing it, she started realizing she couldn't get it all out. So she started cutting. And then eventually she cut all her locks off and started back with micro locks.
she's with uh, the lovely Ephraj as well. But yeah, she had a lot of stuff in her locks. That's why I say always check and know what's going on with your locks because the degree to which you invest in your, your hair. Um, it's like my, my girlfriend used to say, if you're true to your teeth, if you're not true to your teeth, they'll be false to you. If you're true to your hair, it'll be true to you. It'll take care of you and you'll it'll be able to weather the storm of this sister lock or micro lock journey. But that means you got to at regular intervals, check your hair. You got to make sure you keep tabs on what's going on with it. So if you notice something that's going on with your hair, you can hop on it right away, whether it's thinning, hair loss, or some of the other stuff that I talk about on this channel. The earlier you intervene, the greater the likelihood you can arrest this situation before it gets, uh, before it escalates and turns into something that starts producing uh, some harmful effects on your hair that become visually noticeable. So I love y'all. I love y'all. Don't forget to like this video. If you have not purchased your copy of The Assignment by my baby sister, who is a master's level therapist. She is wonderful. This is her book. It's called The Assignment. Um, it's scripture, prayer, Jesus, and therapy. What type of therapy? We're talking about addressing issues related to trauma, boundaries, things that you may not even realize that may be lodged in your psyche that you really hadn't thought about. But as you begin to go through some of these identity, emotion, self-care, it's amazing. And also you can get my book, Manifesting Your Masterpiece, on Amazon as well. I love y'all. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your weekend. Give me a shout out in the comments, please. Don't forget to tell me if there's something in particular that you find that works for your hair at all. So, and I forgot to remember some, for some people, it can be as simple as, uh, taking a little spray bottle and putting some apple cider vinegar in there, which is one of the reasons why, and the sulfur eight shampoo, did I mention that? That's wonderful too, y'all. No, we were using that when we were babies and growing up and that's really good. I think there's Selsun Blue that some people have used. I've only over the years periodically used Selsun 8 and it was really good. And also I forgot to mention too, washing your hair more frequently. If you're someone that washes your hair every four weeks, maybe you need to wash it every couple of weeks. If you're someone like me who might wash it every eight to 10 weeks, then and you, you still feel your scalp is clean, but you're starting to develop problems with it as you go on your journey. Maybe you have to wash it every four to six weeks or every three weeks. That's why it's so important to pay attention to what your unique hair care needs are, y'all, because as you go through this journey, those needs are going to change. I can promise you. What my hair needed back then is not what my hair needs now. Back then, I wasn't concerned about the weight, the length, the heaviness of it. Uh, you know, I was using heavier oils on my hair and all of that. Now I have to be aware of that because I've had these things for a long time. They're, um, getting a little heavier. I'm having to pay attention to the reties more. I'm, I'm having to pay attention to my hair when I retighten it. I'm having to take a look at my scalp health. I'm having to take a look at my hair washing regimen. I mean, you always have to vary things up periodically or cease doing something, give your hair or your skin or your body an opportunity to do what it does and then dive back in either with that same thing or something new. It's important to shake things up sometimes. So give me a shout out in the comments. I love y'all. I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your weekend. I love you. I thank you for all of your wonderful support and um, I'll see y'all soon. Hey ladies, do you love the way your skin looks and feels? I know I do because I am using the I Am Melanin Magic Anti-Aging Serum. And at 50, I love the way my skin looks and feels. This blend is bomb. It renews, revitalizes, rejuvenates, soothes, conditions, moisturizes, tones, brightens, and fades all in one step. So if you're ready to get your glow on, go get you some. I am Melanin Magic Anti-Aging Serum. If you struggle with acne during your youth or even as an adult, it's time to give I am Melanin Magic Acne Serum a try. Unlike other harsh products that dry your skin, our oils balance and purify, helping to heal inflammation. All natural and formulated to meet the requirements of melanated skin. You'll see results in no time. Don't delay, order yours today. Do you have dark spots from skin irritation? How about unsightly marks from acne that's lasted way too long? Fade Magic can help you find your way back to radiance over time. Don't delay, order yours today. 
If you are not using Melanin Magic Hair Oil, then what are you using? Hi, I'm the creator of the I Am Melanin Magic Skin and Hair Care brand. The I Am Melanin Magic Hair Oil is our premium product. It is the leading high-end supplement for your mane. It reduces breakage and promotes growth and can be used on all hair types and looks, from straightened hair and micro locks to wigs and protective styles. It's antifungal, antibacterial, and it's antifungal, so you know you're protected. It softens and conditions your hair, and it's anti-frizz too. Hey guys, so I started using this oil called I Am Melanin Magic since February of this year, and check out the new growth. Like, it's insane. Not only did it help with my new growth, but it smells amazing too. See the dramatic improvements Denisha has made after not having hair around her edges for three years. Tanya's hair had been like this for almost 20 years and while getting injections. Her doctor said it was scarred and would never grow back. After four weeks of using I Am Melanin Magic, this is what she looked like. I Am Melanin Magic did this to Danette's hair after a short time. This is really all your hair needs. It's rich with antioxidants, loaded with growth promoting ingredients. Look at the growth of my hair. It's amazing, the product speaks for itself. Order yours today and don't delay. Don't delay, purchase yours today. I am Melanin Magic and so are you.